Okay, so in this video, I'm going to be um, cracking passwords. Uh, I'm going to be using two programs, uh, Netcat and John the Ripper. So Netcat is a networking utility, and it comes pre-installed on most versions of Linux. Um, it's used to read and write to TCP or UDP connections. Uh, so on Windows, you'll have to install this manually, uh, both programs. So uh, in this scenario, I'm going to be using Netcat as a listener um, So on my attacking machine. This is also known as a network server. Um, and then I'm going to have the victim, victim machine act as a network client. And that will be connecting back to the network server. So um, once the victim machine uh, connects back to my network server, uh, it's then going to output the contents of the password file and the shadow file. Uh, so once this happens, my attacking machine is then going to save this output as a text document on my desktop. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna do the same thing for both the password and the shadow file. So the first step is gonna to go ahead and set up the listener on the attacking machine. So I'll go ahead and do that now. So in this command, I'm saying netcat listen on port 5454, the V is for verbose. Anything that's received on this port number is then going to be placed inside of a password file on my desktop. Uh, same thing with this, um, it's just this one is a shadow file. So um, this right here specifies the next command. So we'll go ahead and run that. So I went ahead and placed the password file on my desktop. It's empty right now because the client has not connected to the server and sent any information yet. So in this command, um, I'm saying netcat, so netcat and then v for verbose, so connect to 192.168.99.100 on port 5454. Once you're connected to this, to this IP address, to this IP address and port number, send the contents of etc and password. Uh, same thing with this, it's doing the same thing except it's sending the shadow file. So connect to, so it's been connected from unknown. So there's the IP address of this machine. Once again, it did the same thing with the second command. Now, if I go ahead and cat the contents of one of these files that are located on my desktop, it'll show the same thing that's inside here. So I received the, the password file. So let's go ahead and check out the shadow file. Uh, once again, I received both file both files. So um, now I'm gonna go ahead and um, unshadow these files. Now you don't have to unshadow, um, unshadow these files. Um, you don't have to combine them, but um, the thing is, is it gives you more flexibility as to like which hashes you want to crack. So um, I mean, you could do things like filter out non-admin hashes, or you can tell John to skip a hash password if it's been expired. So um, for the sake of the video, I'm gonna go ahead and do the steps in unshadowing the password. So um, inside, I just want to show something. So inside these two so the big thing the difference um, between these two is um, 
the shadow file contains the actual hash path, the hashed passwords of of the users. So, for example, like guest guest down here. So, um, the first part of this is the user the username the user's name, and then it's colon and then an X. So that X means that the the sh that the the actual hash password is not is not stored inside the password file. Um, so then the next part of that is the user ID and then the group ID and then the home directory of that user and then the login shell so um, so before 1992 um, hash passwords were stored inside the password file uh, this is a big issue because every user has read writes to to this file um, so in 1992, the hash passwords were moved out of the password file, and then a file called shadow, which is this file, uh, was then created, and it's it's utilized today. Um, so the shadow file contains the hash passwords of each and every user. Um, so the big thing, the difference, the difference between this one and this one, obviously besides the hash passwords where they're stored um, is you have to be a root user to be able to read this um, versus before in the password file where they were stored previously you could just any user could open this up and, and see you know the hash passwords and then copy those over and then you know try to crack them either brute force or dictionary attack um, so you either have to be root you have to be a root user uh, you have to have the root users um, account information to log in or you have to be a user with sudo privileges um, so okay so now let's go ahead and um, run the unshadow command uh, it's it's a command that's inside the inside John the Ripper's suite of tools um, So I am the the way that this command works is you specify the location of the password file, and then you specify the location of the shadow file, and then I'm sending the output to um, a file called combined on my desktop. So now that that's there, let's go ahead and open that up and look. Okay, so inside here, um, now the difference is it shows the user, the hash password, not an X, the user ID, the group ID, the home directory, and then the login script or the login shell. So now we can go ahead and take this and import this into John the Ripper and try to crack these hash passwords. Okay, so now that I'm gonna use I'm gonna use John to go ahead and try to run a dictionary attack against these hash passwords. And now it's starting. Now usually um, the default word list that's used is the is John's password.lst word list. Now if there is no if there's no passwords in there that matches with the hashed passwords that you're trying to run a dictionary attack against, then they will automatically, John will automatically go and run a brute force attack using ASCII. Okay, so now that it's um, it's found some passwords, let's go ahead and um, show them. So let's go with Brandon and his password.
guy's password. Mm, I'm logging as Brandon. Let's try risk, risks, and Cath Catherine. Well, looks like it worked.